nine years old, she's a big pretty girl, she's just under six pounds in weight, and uh, she's got about a six foot two wingspan, pretty large. A couple of safety guidelines before I do let her go, one, she's very, very friendly, she may well sit right next to you, again, don't worry, she's absolutely fine. I will warn you that if you do stroke her, she will bring a whole new meaning to the word finger buffet, look at that way. You lose your fingers. She can eat a, a, a quite a large rat in one go. Secondly, if you want to go to the uh, the shop or the toilet, see what these two young ladies are doing now. Please do use the path around the lawn. If you walk across the lawn, you'll have her trying to sit on your arm or your head. She's got very sharp little toenails. Put it put it that way. Now she's not been flying as much this year as she normally does because she's just reached breeding age this year and uh, earlier on in the month she, she became quite ill she wasn't very happy so uh, she had about a month off the flying but um, she's now back and raring to go yeah, good girl go on, then. again, being a girl, she's larger than the boys girls are bigger, girls are stronger and girls are a lot more muscular than the boys. Now I won't talk about the temperament of the, uh, of the girls, we'll leave that for another day. Needless to say, the females aren't as cooperative as the boys. That's only in the owl world, by the way. I said nothing about, uh, about humans. Very, very big. Silent, deadly hunter. Now, she was born here. Mum and Dad are called Olga and Tom. So they live just down there. You may have seen three of the babies in our education centre. You may have seen the three babies down there earlier as well. They will grow up into Kesmers, hopefully. So they'll grow pretty quickly. She's only four years old. An eagle out like this could happily live 30, maybe 40, 50 years. Good girl. You missed that, didn't you? Yeah. She's not landing on anyone's head just yet. And mum and dad actually were hit by cars in Siberia. Um, both were, uh, were flying around the wild like you do. And uh, just got worked, basically. Uh, bad, uh, bad habits. Not telling the difference between real fur 
and space fair. Um, John Wilco said he's handling toys, furry tackles around the sound of the sea, um, novelty bags, and two pages will get to ground and <laughs> Thirdly, this is now to catch a baby rope deer on adult fox. She's sitting up there, looking over the hedge, and spots somebody walking their Springer Spaniel, their Collie, their Jack Russell, their Wasai Lid Terrier. She's going to go, ooh, yummy. And that'll be the end of that. And then I have to go explain to them why my eagle owl's just eating their dog. So you, uh, you can't have an eagle owl this big flying around hunting unless it's in the right areas, i.e. farmland, well out of the way of any dogs cats or anything small and furry enough to be eaten. She's been with me now since she was a week old and that's about sparrow size so she thinks I'm dad. She was really really horrible to the other members of staff when she was younger. On my days off she'd be flown by other members of staff. She'd sit and fly up there on top of the shop and just go not for an hour you know six or seven hours she'd sit up there and used to ring me up on my day off and go Get your blooming owl off the uh, off the roof. Well, that that's the uh, that's the version uh, that uh, I've edited somewhat, shall we say? Come on, then. we'll give her the last couple of pieces. Then we'll bring her. Then we'll bring her around for you to see. Again, very quickly she gets forward. The more food you give her, the further she gets, the less she wants to fly. The more food she will get, the more she'll want to sit and ignore me. There we go, good girl. So we'll let her eat her food. And we'll, we'll pick her up and bring her around for you to see. What have I got in here? Hello. Good girl. You might hear her whinging, that's her having a choppy. You horrible man picking me up, I want to fly a bit. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> A lot of people are scared of her because she's pretty big. A lot of people look at her and go, "Ew." Believe it or not, it's true. Somebody last week had the audacity to call Kesma ugly. Yes, they said, "Ooh, an ugly-looking bird." They obviously can't see very well. Um, the Kesma, again, believe it or not, is again one of our. Least adopted birds as well. She's quite remarkable as well, considering she's uh, our largest. And watching her, um, the best way to put it is she's flying door, basically. It's pretty huge. Again, we don't fly her in the middle of the day, especially on a sunny, sun, really sunny day, because she is basically Siberian. It'll be like us flying around with five jumpers on. So if she gets too hot and fed up, she'll get stroppy, she'll sit in the tree, and she'll just go mm, to me, basically, she won't come down. But the good thing about her being so tame is you can get her when she's sitting up trees. Uh, when Kesma was learning to fly, I was up more trees than Tarzan. <laughs> up there, then the hawthorn tree next to a holly tree. So I decided to sit right at the very top of this holly tree. I had to climb up the hawthorn, grab her, stick her under my arm, and climb down one-handed. Now you try doing that with her. Not easy in the best of cases, but um, because she was reasonably friendly, you know, she might be much. Yeah, much, yeah. She still wasn't too amused. She's got a lovely wing, so I'm having a juicy wing. There you go. Ever so quiet, they're silent hunters. All they do is simply scan the environment, wait for something nice to come along, and slide down and grab it. They do differ hunting slightly when they're, when they're after baby roe deer. Baby roe deer are normally left in a long grass or nettles or brambles by mum while she goes off and feeds. What the eagle owls will do is they'll quarter the field, go up and down, up and down. They hear the slightest noise of a roe deer making a noise, only have to twitch his ears or breathe heavily, or just move, push down they go, and that's the end of that. Really jumping on your arm this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go. 
hell. Wait a second. So I want to fly some more. I know it says when Avery does fly some more, he will just sit on top of an Avery and uh, watch the world go by. I agree. I agree totally, Kazma. But a huge commitment. I do have to get Kesley to other people. Kesley could be here for another 45, 50 years. I, uh, if Kesley's only used to me, I have to stay here while I'm 76. So, although it's job security for life, I do have to make sure Kesley is used to other people. If she isn't used to other people, then I ever leave. She gets dumped in an Avery for the rest of her life and never flown like she was today. It's not fair, really. So, uh, she's going on really, really well. And um, she hasn't flown for anyone but me for a couple of years now. So we're going to uh, we're going to throw Kesma out hopefully tomorrow with Andy and see what uh, see what goes on. It might be really good. She might sit there and go, "Who are you?" Or she might just sit in the tree and go, "Yeah, right, mate." So we'll we'll, we'll see. She'll get there. Right, we'll leave Kesma away and we'll get you next.